Nationals. Kimchi boys on match and grand final point here in this third game. And a 3-0 sweep was certainly not out of the question from what we've seen from Kimchi boys so far. Uh, but definitely XYZ starting to look like they may they have a chance to take a game or two here. Uh, I like the Yumi band coming through. Otherwise, <laughs> you have standard bands. Uh, Senna actually banned out as well. So, uh, you know, that's... That's an interesting adaptation, but uh, Yumi, uh, Johnny's happy. We're all happy. No Yumi this yes. game. Yes, no Yumi this game. Uh, the Cinnabon uh, maybe would be uninteresting if you just like looked at the last game. You're like, I don't mm. feel like the Senna was pretty much unimpactful, but again, I feel like it was an itemization issue and like just yeah. a, uh, Well, and uh, it was that. so but, impactful in the lane. You can't deny that. Yeah, like, yeah. You, know, you so saw the, the CS lead that Ezreal yeah. got because of it. Yeah, and it's just it's a good champion still, like like and, yes, and just absolutely. got a buff on this patch specifically. So mm -hmm. it's like, it makes a lot of sense in in, in its vacuum. Um, so we are seeing the Ezreal being picked up once again. Obviously, we saw a big carry performance from Ellie that almost brought them to the mm -hmm. win. They got down to the two inhibitors, <laughs> like he did pretty yeah. much everything no, yeah. that yeah. he could have. Uh, just was able to get down. Aphelios will still be the choice on the other side. So uh, that that's just kind of being run back again. Uh, it again didn't look super good until late game started happening and then you just saw those damage numbers keep going up yeah so there's the aphelios coming through as well these are pretty much uh, all we've seen is these two ad carries we saw the virus in the first game but other than that very strong lots of lane presence uh lots of scaling uh opportunities lots of damage in team fights pretty standard stuff set was the first pick uh, as we've come to expect here for um for most of these teams and mm -hmm. snarfles once again going on to that comfort pick he really prioritizes the trundle he was very good on it and he really thinks uh highly of this pick uh so the adaptation here is nautilus for the kimchi boys so they're going for a yeah. more aggressive style in this early game and potentially uh looking to get some roaming into that yeah, we've seen a lot of enchanter sports kind of coming through. That was kind of like the in-game meta so far that's been being built mm -hmm. up. But of course, with the Yumi ban, uh, it does open you up to play the playmaking supports like this. Because like when Yumi's around, Nautilus just doesn't provide enough damage for you, even mm -hmm. if you hit the hook, to be able to kind of finish off a kill. Because Yumi will just heal it up, and it'll be feel like you did nothing. But mm -hmm. now that that's off the kind of the board, you have a huge engage potential with Nautilus, and even some pretty good peel if you need it uh, between your ultimate and, and and different abilities. So Nautilus is one of my favorite supports right now. To be completely yeah, honest. I, I, Really and it's fun to watch, it's, yeah. so that's bonus. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's it's a very exciting champion to watch. Uh, uh, Lamppost once again asking us to imagine if he had a real weapon with that <laughs> uh, signature pick on Jax. And uh, that is going to be the end of the first draft phase. So mm -hmm. the Oriana ban comes out. Yun be very effective on that in game one. And the Karma ban... Um, and so we've got, we've got a couple of solo lanes left to pick and we've got a jungler left to pick for kimchi boys. Now nine, six, one still has the option of the Olaf here. And he played that just fine into trundle, uh, last mm -hmm. game, but no Yumi available this time. So they may do an adjustment here. Yeah, I was talking about Enchanter supports. They banned the Karma out as kind of that other, like kind of like the next tier of Enchanter mm -hmm. supports um, kind of coming out. So you're going to be able okay. to get that one. And we're going to see the Blitzcrank. So uh -huh. it's the bot lanes trying to make plays now. And I like to see it. Yeah. Yeah, Blue Hole, I uh, uh, took this pick very early when he first joined XYZ and it was a, a very effective you know so that so the double hook uh, situation going on in the bot lane and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very curious about this jungle pick because it's not an Olaf team right now they don't mm -hmm. have a, a ways to empower and there you go early game focus Elise mm -hmm. coming through so that is going to be able to pressure the trundle be able to out gank the trundle early mm -hmm. and uh, see if they can get those early game advantages for kimchi boys and sometimes I really like this out of junglers when you kind of have like yeah that scaling 80 carry like how do you bridge him over that gap give him a champion like at least to come and gank for you because it's it's easy gold potentially yep. if you're the uh -oh. like mind you it is ganking against ezreal so that's not as easy yeah. and here we go the signature rise we've been waiting for it he didn't play it last week it looks mm. like he wasn't even not going to play it this week but no honestly xyz i think have a plan they have the vladimir over here and i think that's what they want to try to match it with because they didn't ban it last time they were on red side they let it go yep. they banned it when they were on blue side because they wouldn't guarantee they get the counter for it. But yes. now they're on red side. They're going to pick up this Vladimir, and they believe Kept can answer Yumbi. 
This is going to be the true test for Kept. Can you take your signature pick and go right up against the signature pick of Yun B? He takes it blind. This rise is going to be so, so powerful if Yun B can get it rolling. It's all up to Kept and Captain Snarfles to shut that down. We're going to yeah. once again take a quick competitive integrity break and we will be back. Can Kimchi Boys take the series with this game and Yun B on rise or can XYZ extend to a game four? We'll see after the break and we're back it's game three of the manitoba esports league finals we have kimchi boys up 2-0 now on the blue side xyz looking to answer back and extend the series over on the red and we got an interesting game coming up because it looked like xyz could have won game two it looked like yeah. hey this wasn't young b carrying his team it looked like other things kind of happening and nine six actually looked like the mad carry on their team on that one but there's no yumi anymore and <laughs> nine six gonna have to play a little differently and yeah this get this series is two zero but it feels a lot closer than that mm -hmm. i've got to say even if it if it goes in the favor of kimchi boys this match i'll still say you know this felt like a close match and xyz you know really had a shot here uh, oh yeah it, like, you know game it's just one been, yeah. again game one just felt like kimchi boys just slightly ahead every step of the way yep. like that's how, yep. this is what it felt like the whole game yep. wasn't game a two, total stomp yeah it was clearly possibly xyz's game you tell anyone yep. i took down two inhibitors you win that game nine times out of ten exactly. however that one out of ten we just saw happen because mm -hmm. kimchi boys just executed those last fights literally to perfection because if anything yep. went wrong with those they just lose the game yeah and that flash from olaf with yumi onto the ezreal right by oh. the bottom inhibitor you know like the, the these these just little plays little pieces of aggression and pieces of just mechanical outplay mm -hmm. that you kimchi boys offer you know just turn the tides even when they get behind i mean it, they, it, yeah. it looked like the one game that like you'd be was playing off, and I, I feel like yeah. we've never yeah. seen Yun be off, and he was off that game. Maybe he's not super comfortable in Twisted Fate. We did see a one court game where he was a little mm -hmm. over-aggressive too last week, but it, it really felt like the one time where it's like, hey, if Yun is not on, can Kimchi Boy still win a game? And yeah. it, they proved they can, and they really made it happen, but here they go, XYZ making the aggressive level one play. Actually, Captain Starfield is level two already, so they're just gonna run at him. Blue Holes trying to get something going on over here. Chum Buckets is pretty low. He's gonna be able to get out and they commit a lot to that one. Oh man. Did you boys still alive? And so close there. Blue hole actually really, really tragic. Hit a minion with his with his hook, uh, just as I am owner flashed away. So uh, you know, so close there. Ooh, Lamppost with the, yeah, some nice damage, but still nothing against Set. Set will be able to heal that back up. And yeah, re really, really close. A good idea from Captain Starfalls, but it is going to put him quite a bit behind in the jungle. Um, that Trundle wants to power farm, uh, mm -hmm. and so that it's up to the bot lane of XYZ to use that advantage that they were just given with those summoner spells used mm -hmm. uh, in order to, you know, leverage that into a lead in this and uh, shore up what Captain Snarfles is going to get behind uh, by giving up some uh, mm -hmm. experience there. Yeah, exactly. And in fact, like, they actually did a pretty decent job of not using too many summoner spells over in the bot lane. Mm -hmm. like, they still have their heal and they still have a flash on Chum Buckets. So, like, yeah. Really just a valuable uh, job by Kimchi Boys there. Here comes 9-6. Trying Ooh. to make something happen. He misses the root, but will it matter? Blue Hole's going to flash away. And 9-6 jumping on top of that <laughs> one. Uh, a little bit awkward. Meanwhile, Yunbi is the target here for Captain Starfalls. Hits him with the club. It will not be enough. He'll take a couple turret hits and walk away. And look at Yunbi holding his flash once, once again. again. He was yeah. so low there. And Kept holds the flash as well, even though potentially that flash could have uh, could have secured the kill. Or at now least the one losing out. Ooh, Lampo's taking a bunch of minion damage over here. It's a bit spicy. A teleport's coming through now. Cozy Trout is going to go for the re-engage. They both flash. Lampo's trying <gasps> no. to walk away. They're just running at the same speed. There he gets some first blood. <laughs> comes <laughs> for Cozy Trout. Just, we all were just waiting for that ability to come off cooldown. Everyone's <laughs> so just looking like... for those cooldowns exactly. It's like, what are they? What are they? He's mashing it on his keyboard. Oh, man. <laughs> That's like, uh, that, that's so close there. Good try from Lamppost, but actually does have to use the flash and the teleport to get back. So uh, going to be an advantage there for Cozy Shroud with the first blood. Yeah. And it, yeah, just uh, just uh, small advantages from Kimchi Boys once again. 
it's so easy with this team of PG boys to not talk about Cozy Trail because again we always talk about Yumbi and then like yeah, yeah, nine yeah. six had like big carry performance and uh, like heck I am owner has to put down yeah. some some put some strong damage over at the eight carry position but Cozy Shroud is a star on his own too as he picked up that kill flash Ooh. coming in for Yumbi trying to get on top of Captain Starfles over here instead will re up lamp post they do have three members committed over towards the top lane will they commit going for the dive Ooh. here go for this dive it's a bit questionable right now they're just zoning off this wave they're gonna get that teleport coming out of Kept as he's gonna go over towards the top lane to help protect the rest of his team but basically they force him to make a teleport happen so yep turns out that's kind of all they were going for is just you know continuing to pressure until kept is forced to use that summoner spell uh so they're going to take that away from vladimir that means it will be even summoners uh kept only with the flash advantage in the mid lane and so yeah we'll see if uh, they're able to utilize that but yeah, good, good job by uh, good job to threaten the dive there, get the teleport out of kept. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Yunbi can take advantage of that. He just is so good at wave control, so good at playing the laning phase uh, that he's going to be able to get big advantages out of such a small, you know, uh, out of such a small play. The only thing that's kind of sad about those teleports being used already is that we're not mm -hmm. going to get the five minute party in the bot lane that that's right really yeah. characterized yeah. game one and two. Like that, mm -hmm. that made those games so much fun just right off the hop getting that kind of action in there but so we won't see that what we will see is xyz kind of just going over towards this dragon while cozy shroud and lamppost are fighting 1v1 over there in the top lane but it looks like they have all the advantage to be able to take the first drake of this game and xyz will do that uncontested yeah i you know cozy shroud is doing really well in this lane but lamppost will have played this matchup so many times you know how often he does he play jackson how often do you see set and high level play right now Mm -hmm. So he's still got that CS lead going, coming in. You know, he's still, uh, he's got a level lead here as well. So I could definitely see Lamppost, you know, going for aggressive plays, maybe going for a solo kill in that lane if Set uh, steps up a little bit too far there. Yeah, that Clock Tower, though, that. it's going to do a lot of work to basically mitigate That's a lot true. of Lamppost yep. damage right now. So Yumbi has met Captain Starfalls in the river. They're smacking each other. Currently, he's going to smite Yumbi, no who flash. doesn't have his yep. flash, and he will go down. Captain Starfalls with a big kill. Meanwhile, Chum Buckets has been hooked here by the Blitzcrank. Will it be enough to make sure he goes down? Exhaust comes through onto Ellie. He's going to try to just run away now because I am owner is here to lay down his own damage. <sighs> and six is right behind them. They're going to continue pushing onto this because they can commit to a dive. But Captain Starfalls is here to potentially defend it, but it will mean they at least will get a couple plates here. Oh, not even get a couple plates here, actually. 9-6 actually oh. with the pillar is in danger. He will go down. LE picks up a kill, and Captain Snarfles is playing off in this game. No wonder he takes Trundle. You talk about uh, you talk about Trundle be, it kind of being a meme, like, oh, the mechanical outplay, he runs up and hits him on Trundle. But actually, that is a really, really nice Trundle play. That pillar placement was impeccable to stop 9-6 from being able to get away from that. And they uh, managed to land the Blitzcrank hook off the back of it. So a really great combo there. Uh, yeah, nothing it's, it's, at all 9-6. It's, it's one of those do. things where, like, yeah, you, you can make fun of the champion. Like, yeah, you don't have these crazy skill shots. But, like, the, the pillar placement is the skill of the champion. And he's yep. really showing master of it it's like i play a lot of jinx and it's like okay you just run around and mm -hmm. auto attack but like it's like your trap placement right it's huge it's crazy meanwhile we always see cozy shroud and that was fighting over Ooh. here cozy shroud will take him out maybe i should have shut up earlier but uh he's <laughs> just up, uh, basically a solo kill even though yumbi arrived yeah cozy shroud that was that's just a stat check right there set just so <laughs> so powerful uh without items and like you say those two cloth armors uh really preventing a lot of damage from lamp posts coming in there only the vamp Ooh. scepter uh, nine six having to having to repel away, but doing so just fine. And yeah, so yeah, cozy shroud walking up, stat checking. Now he has the bramble vest, and so it is going to be very difficult indeed for lamp post to do any uh, mechanical solo plays here up in the top lane. Man, it, it, you got to feel bad if you're lamp post right now because you're seeing your team actually win all across the map, mm -hmm. and your lane is kind of being the one thing that's really behind right now. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's kind of one of those feels bad, but it's like, it's it's gut check time, chill, mm -hmm. you're down 2-0 in a series, you gotta win this game, so it, yep. you gotta chill now. Yeah, I, I have to say XYZ have late game here. Uh, they've got Ezreal, they got Vladimir, they got Jax. You know, you, you if you're scaling up, if you're not giving up too many advantages, uh, you can end up having the advantage with damage in the late game team fights. That post is going to keep going on this, even yeah. with the Bramble Vest. Still trying to find a 1v1, mostly because he's got a bit of a minion advantage for now, but does jump away once Cozy Shroud's minions has come here, so it ends up being pretty okay trade considering mm. you're behind.
Jax has to expend a lot of resources to avoid the Haymaker, and mm -hmm. that's kind of the, the main thing about fighting against Set, is that you, if you avoid, you know, that huge cone, then you're able to deny him a lot of tankiness and damage, and, you know, you're able to probably win the 1v1. The thing is, Jax has to use very, very valuable, you know, mobility skills in order mm -hmm. to avoid it, oh. and so it's just really, oh. really difficult. Blue hole picking up the hook onto Yumbi. Does he have a flashback yet? He does not. It's still not available. It will be up in like a few seconds. Can he get away in time for mm. that? No, Kep will walk up and pick up a kill, and he's got the lead in the mid lane. Yeah, it, it is just XYZ over and over again focusing down Yunbi. They've recognized that maybe it's possible to tilt this guy a little bit if you just <laughs> continue to go after him uh, time and time again. And uh, they continue to do that. Now it's a nice lead here for Vladimir. Looks like so far, and I don't want to speak too soon here, but so far the rise has not been that effective Ooh. and the Vladimir is the answer they're looking for. Here's Kept with the dive. Yeah, he's just wanting to go right at it. 9-6, trying to repel away. Flash comes Ooh. in for Kept, trying to finish off this kill. One more no. damage source will do it, but he gets hooked up by Yumbi and goes, Hey, remember me? I'm the star. Oh, Kept, you gotta go for those. I, I totally understand. He's, you know, he's feeling himself on Vlad right now. He just killed Yumbi, but that's just a bridge too far. Take the Flash and back off. Mm -hmm. uh, 961 now having to recall with such low HP. 961 actually going to help with this fight. Yeah, he's going to be able to get oh. on top of that. Let him post, making a play to at least get a kill. He will eventually go down, but hey, when you're 1v3 and you get a kill, you're happy enough. <laughs> 961 I don't I don't know about that uh, that was a uh, he was he was joining that fight with about three health <laughs> uh, yeah lab post you know they, they should know he's got flash up so they, that's just a that's just greedy uh, they're from and the, the elite the other but, thing is uh, still and it's so hard to factor when you're not the ones playing the game three games is a lot of games just play in a row when they're this high stakes right yeah, so yeah. yeah that's a mistake that maybe you don't make in game one because you're like fresh mm -hmm. in your mm -hmm. mind or whatever and you might have played warm-up games before this right so yep. it's a long series like like it, it is not easy to 3-0 a team and it's not easy mm -hmm. to stay that focused especially with how focused they had to be to win game number two so they lose a little bit there but uh mm -hmm. you're seeing them pick up another dragon over here for xyz they got two now and you know this is still anyone's game but mm -hmm. we're seeing mistakes now coming through for both teams and sometimes series are decided on mistakes Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like you say, you know, even though these players probably play many more games than this in a row occasionally in solo queue, uh, this is a different beast playing competitively this many games in a row. And uh, rare, very few of either of these team series have gone to three games. Uh, they tend to 2 0 their opponents. So, you know, the fatigue could come through here. Now Chumbuck, Chumbuck is Chumbuck wanting to make a play game. here. He's going to get him with the dredged line. We've got to knock him up. Blue Hole tries to flash away, but we'll go down. Yumbi picking up that kill. Kept now trying to be the next target, but he will pull away and then jump out of there with. The proto belt. They're going to use the Rift Herald to continue doing more damage to their turrets, and we'll get it to that point where it just killed it. Oh no, they didn't quite oh, get it there, right. but they will get all the plates for it right now. They're continuing to fight and defend this. They do have the means here. Nice root hit by nine six. He's going to be able Ooh. to jump on top of Kept and pick up that kill. Repels and gets out of there. Oh no, the turret hit was just enough to oh. kill him. I actually thought he was going to be safe and fine, but they at least trade that kill. It's kind of a net gain for Kimchi Boys, but a little bit of sloppiness, like I said, some mistakes coming through. Yeah, uh, it was 9-6 getting out of tower range, but I believe he had red buff, and uh, it caused that damage over time uh. to get him tower aggro. Yeah, see, Snarfles has got a red buff, so uh, that, that red buff was... Um, what uh, garnered at least that tower aggro again. Rude. Uh, but here's another engaged bottom Ooh, lane. Oh, there's a hook. Blue Hole's been hitting all of them today, but right now I Am Owner is going to pick up that one because of Chum Buckets. Yeah, teleport coming in the mid lane. No rest for the Wicked. Yunbi continues to uh, face pressure from XYZ, but managing to get away from it. And, you know, he's going to start to get tanky. Just has the mana items so far. Uh, but another thing I want to mention is uh, earlier on, we saw an interaction that's probably going to be happening all game where Yunbi gets that phase rush uh, activation mm -hmm. and is able to be Teleport. and is so so difficult to hit uh by by the blue hole hook and you really want to pull the rise something i i thought about before but hadn't mentioned until now is that blue hole has a very very important job in this game and that is don't hook cozy shroud <laughs> you do not <laughs> want him close to your team uh he just it just gives him a free very powerful ultimate hang on chumbuck mm -hmm. stops the back here yeah, after that first server goes down, Chumbuckets now moves into the jungle and finds Captain Snarfles over here. Mm. Can get a teammate help him. Blue Hole actually almost hooked him over towards the tower, but is not going to get that one. The kill will come through for I Am Owner, and they get a nice little pick over in the jungle after the tower. Yeah, Captain Snarfles thought he had a little bit more backup than he actually did. And yeah, the hook would have been really nice over the oh, wall. Nine, Hang six. on, 9-6 though. 
I didn't quite see the beginning of that, but I believe Blue Hole hit a hook to bring him back over the wall over yeah, there. And so Ellie's going to take him out there. So Blue Hole, I love it. Again, they were all playing Enchanter supports before, and mm -hmm. it was like, cool, you exist supports. But yeah. now they're playing Playmakers, and they're like, we get to have yeah. fun. We get to play. Blue Hole's hitting tons of hooks. Mm -hmm. Tom Buck has hit a couple of himself as well. So this is, a, this is a support game right now, and I love it. Yeah, the tanky, pudgy boys Ooh, coming in. Shroud. Now Cozy Shroud. No, get stunned ultimate. up. Jax, you know, Jax can really, really go toe to toe with Set in a one v one at this point, mm -hmm. uh, especially now uh, that he's getting towards that Blade of the Ruined King. Probably sticking around just to get a little more gold so he can go back to get that. Mm -hmm. uh, but once he's got it, you know, I think that he matches up just fine against the Set um, and, and is going to scale up uh, further in that regard. So then it will have to be Yunbi sent up towards uh, that that lane to take care of lamppost and once they get to that point in the game xyz uh, start to build these advantages uh, no, because that late game is only uh, shored up by the rise here uh, yeah and I, somewhat but, the Ophelios. well you know what's terrifying about this game too is that what's they up? ganked mid lane over and over again mm. and yumbi still has a shutdown bonus available yep. he's shut so down good. bonus positive <laughs> positive kill uh differential and the yeah. cs lead <laughs> like, yeah, like this are you is kidding what, me like yeah Oh, he really is like there are the comp the the comparisons to Faker. You know, you, you just have to think of it because this is exactly what Faker did. You know, especially he still does it, but especially when he was first sort of rising to to greatness, is that you know if you're playing against Faker, you your jungler you don't have a jungler in other lanes. Mm -hmm. You you have to go mid lane. Uh, just because of the threat Faker provides. And this is exactly what Yunbi is doing, just mm -hmm. forcing Captain Snarfles to take these, you know, unfavorable paths in the early game and always, always end up at mid. And, you know, it's just, it, Yunbi survives it, and then you, mm. you you just lose because your other players are good enough to carry. So, yeah, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's so, so powerful. And, and I, I love what I'm seeing here from Yunbi. And what I kind of love about it is that really what we see out of Yunbi is a star of the rise. Oh, never mind, let me shut up because Coach Shaw got hooked. But, like you said, that's not not the one you want to hook. He's going to be able to be tanky enough to wait for the rest of his team. They're here now. They're here to do the damage. Captain Snarfles, you are going to go down low. In fact, you're going to switch over towards Kep because now they can all surround him. But he'll flash out. But oh. the post is here. He's going to jump into there. He's going to be ultimate out. Cozy Shroud will pick up that kill. Blue Hole's going to go down real low, but he'll just barely get out of there. Double kill now comes through for Cozy Shroud. He's looking to try to get the LE, but he will flash over to the wall and ends up being a 2-4-1 in favor of Kinchy Boys. Uh, the comms in the XYZ voice chat right now maybe going a little crazy that is not <laughs> the plan there uh kept flashing out and girthy lampos flashing in almost simultaneously with the aoe ability of kept not going off and really hitting anyone whereas the lamppost going in with the full five man stun mm -hmm. and uh yeah that is that is just a little bit of poor coordination there there was the potential for a huge wombo combo there but kept yeah. not feeling like that was the correct play flashing out and yeah, oh man, that's just a little bit, that, 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 that's so rough because, you know, you could see some, some potential for a crazy play there. Yeah. And, uh, and it just, just the miscommunication a little bit. Yeah. Just like it, it, again, this is the finals of this whole thing. You've been playing this whole season and it's like, it could come down to moments like that. Like, yeah. that's going to be something they're going to have to review. Because I don't, I don't actually even know the answer and I just watch the play, right? Yeah. It, yep. it, it would have been correct for them to have totally committed to that. Uh, mm -hmm. We're gonna have to watch the vods. I like. I, yeah. I'm willing. To, I'm pretty down to yeah. that later, to be honest. And, and what's because correct? It's, it's so close. Yeah. What's correct is to you know, do, like cooperate and have the same play. Like the correct play is not as important as the play everybody is on mm -hmm. board with and everybody is doing. You know, and you've got to. You know, it, it can't be like okay. It, it can't be the speed of. Let's do this play. Okay, now we're doing this play. It has to be, let's do this play. Okay, we've already been doing this play for five seconds as we've been saying this. You know what I mean? Like that is the, that's the, those are the margins it comes down to in that type of team fight. And it's kind of crazy stuff happening all over the place. We're seeing mm -hmm. a 3,000, uh, 4,000 because that's how math works. Gold lead right <laughs> now for Kimchi boys. But XYZ, they got a team composition that is going to play well into this late game. And I know I, like, yep. I probably sound like a broken record, but it's always that thing that I always kind of lean on. And we saw it in game two. Kimchi boys leaned on their ability to get into the late game. Mm. See if XYZ is going to do it now. Blue Hole just going to take that ultimate as he flashes over the wall to safety. But yep. it, flash it, it's all penetrated there. there. The other thing you trade on the other side is though just Yunbi in the late game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just yeah. this man. A point yeah. I was trying to make earlier uh, before he got in the fight. We're really seeing a North American player 
becoming a rising star. Like last, yeah. he really made a monumental rise this split in terms of solo queue rank. And uh, like I said, this guy deserves an academy league spot at the very least coming up yeah. for the next season. But anyway, we are seeing a teleport come in for Kept is going towards the mid lane. We do have Cozy Child pushing over the top lane turret and taking that one down. So they're going to be doing that mm -hmm. while they continue to siege over here, but they can't really just leave Cozy Shroud by themselves, can they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I wanna I wanna bounce off that Yunbi points and say, you know, it's you're exactly right. And Yunbi, we've we've talked to actually nine six one, who is his brother. We talked to him on one of the um, one of the post game interviews, and you know, Yunbi does have aspirations uh, beyond the Manitoba Esports League. You know, mm -hmm. this guy is good enough to play professional League of Legends, and he wants to play professional League of Legends. And Ooh, uh, hang on, the hook, hook coming in. I'll, I'll continue that was later. Not that bad because he's actually relatively squishy compared to some members on their team, aka Cody Shroud. So he does take him out. Yeah. It will basically burn out from that one. So nice job to be able to get that pick. Meanwhile, Lampost is being picked over by Yunbi. And what did I say? The one man that can scale against your entire team is here. 9 6 is here to answer to help his brother out. He's going to put some damage on to. Captain Starples, who will eventually get away, but 9-6 will pick up the kill onto Blue Hole. Meanwhile, he's being RKO'd back towards the turret over on this side. Cozy Shroud doesn't care about the turret. He's just tanking it up. And Yumbi's going to be able to pick up another kill as well. And here's 9-6 picking up one for himself, actually. So it's 3 for 0 Are you kidding me right oh. now? Kimchi boys execute like masters. As XYZ, I, I, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what... Like, I just don't know how I would be able to keep my mental state, you know, positive at this <laughs> point when you see Yunbi do that. Like, this is exactly what we were seeing right at the beginning of the season when people first allowed Yunbi to play Rise. And it's just like, it really feels like you have, you know, uh, some sort of raid boss on the map wandering around. We, we throw that around, raid boss down if you take out yeah. a really tanky. <laughs> but this is like a real, you know, advanced late game raid boss that is you know you, you have to try this over and over you've got it you've got to die to him like 10 20 30 times before you figure out okay i need to do exactly this and i need to take you know put, put exactly this composition <laughs> together to take him down and uh, xyz doesn't have that luxury right now yeah so everything is though, it's like a raid so... boss where you have to fight at the same time as another raid boss because yeah. <laughs> is going exactly. absolutely off in this game too as well yeah he yeah. like there was moments in that call i was trying to make it sound like xyz was gonna come back in this fight because cozy mm -hmm. shroud brings a guy into a tower range but he just doesn't care right yeah. he's just yeah. so strong and so mechanically well aware of what his champion's limits are and, mm -hmm. and he's just pushing them and it's 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 a very very scary notion right now for xyz but they're gonna try to find a pick here as blue hole is speeding up to try to get someone tries to get onto yumbi is not gonna be able to get that one expertly dodged so now you will go down yumbi will take you out you don't hook me i kill you here is cozy shroud <laughs> just all to get to their team and then walking <laughs> around because he doesn't care about anything they do le you did so much damage last game it's just not here in this game yeah. because your team is getting pounced on yeah, Cozy Shroud going for a 1v4 and uh, XYZ not even liking those odds. So that is, yeah, that shows the power. Yeah, Baron was taken, by the way. So this is going to be the push uh, for an inhibitor. They're just going to give it up here um, with Ezreal poking. And like you say, it's just the, the damage is not there compared to last game. Tanky members on the side of Kimchi Boys able to sustain this out just fine. They use the Rise oh. Ultimate to get away and they're going to go for a top turret. And they're just gonna move over there. This is like this is a lot of kin to game one where they're just out rotating XYZ mm -hmm. and they're doing even faster than they were in game one because it seems so hard for them to do anything over here. But here we go. Can XYZ commit to a fight? Can they win a fight they commit to? Blue Hole is gonna go for a hook. He will grab Chum Buckets. He will go down. They can continue this fight and go on. Cozy Shroud though says, nah, nah, I'm gonna answer that kill. He picks up that one here. He's tanking everything. He won't go down. He flashes over the wall and is fine. Oh. They get a kill. They trade the supports. But Yunbi's here to continue doing damage. So many of them are low. Meanwhile, they don't even have 9-6 in the fight with them. He's just Pushing the bottom turret. He's looking to get a second inhibitor for them. And it's just insane. The outplays Kimchi boys put together. Unreal. Cozy Shroud with that flash completely faked XYZ out. You saw Kept flashing over the wall towards the red buff. And you saw an ultimate going towards the Rift Herald Baron Pit. And neither of oh. them were even close to where Lamp where Cozy Shroud had flashed out. Now another fight. 
He got hooked, it got knocked up, but it didn't matter. He gets the kill. Ali does eventually kill him back, but it is traded as Cozy Shroud picks up a double. He's still here facing two members. Will he finally die? We were talking about raid bosses, and he's one of them, and oh. they're finally over here. There's three of them. Can they contest it? They're not even willing to cast them, test them by himself because 9 6 is pushing on their base. He goes golden. He kills someone. He jumps back in and doesn't care. They want to win the championship, and they want to win it now. I am owners taking down these turtles. There's only one left. There's only a Nexus left. Everybody, you are looking at your Manitoba Esports League Season 1 Champions! Kimchi boys have been dominant all season long. They have not dropped a game. They are just so, so amazing. They have some of the best players in North America, and they got to showcase that against extremely strong contenders in XYZ, who, you know, challenged them in every facet of the game, but Kimchi Boys could not be defeated. The might of Kimchi Boys could never be toppled, and this is your championship team. There's no doubt about it. Absolute Whew. insanity put together by this team. They were not answered by anyone in this league. Kimchi mm -hmm. boys just came out here and wanted to prove that they were the best, and they just clearly did. XYZ were there. They were there yeah. to contest. The first two games were pretty darn good. The second game, they mm -hmm. very co easily could have won. But in the end, it's a 3-0 for Kimchi boys. They dominated the league. They dominate the finals, and they're our champions. Yeah, and, you know, I, I, as we go back to the Red Bull Analyst Desk, I just want to say, you know, I firmly believe this series was closer than the 3-0. and Yeah. And, uh, you know, with that, I'll send it back over to Darren. I think Johnny and I are going to uh, hop into the call and join you as well as we break down that game. Take it away, Darren. Thank you, Wes and Johnny. What an exciting series. What an exciting season overall. Uh, a bit of a, a bit of a stomp here in the last game. Um but entertaining nonetheless. Uh, let's break it down a little bit, shall we? Let's talk about... Um, uh, sorry, I, I should say that Taithalus... Uh, we lost Taithalus, not like actually lost him. Uh, his internet uh, went down, unfortunately. <laughs> um, he is still with us, but not just in this on this stream. Um, we wanted to talk about 9-6. Right. As the game was closing out, we were like, who's the MVP of this of, of this series? And we were having a hard time deciding. But, you know, we we are, are I, I, I'll open this conversation to, to you guys as well. Um, but we were thinking nine six. And Stefano, I want you to talk a little bit about nine six in this last game and why we thought that maybe we we should give him kind of an unofficial MVP or at least our opinion of it. Well, I think nine six throughout the series was um played consistently the best but in specifically this last game i loved him in that game just because he functions as so good of an example four and three or something it was a very bad kda but he was still for me anyway the mvp just because he didn't have to be good good he or he didn't have to, you know, get these kills, become this hyper carry to pop off. He understood that all he needed to do was get Cozy Shroud ahead, get Yumbi ahead, and from that point on, just land the occasional cocoon, and his job was done. And he did that so, so well. It's just a really good example of why most of us are in, like, iron, is because we care too much about our KDA, <laughs> where 9-6 obviously didn't care at all about his KDA, and because of that, the... the uh, the win in the final game there was mostly on his back. I got to agree with that uh, on the final game. I think there's definitely an argument to be made over the course of the series for Cozy Shroud. Um, that kind of lane dominance, you know, there was jungle pressure and definitely the uh, XYZ jungle pressure was more towards mid. But Cozy Shroud, just, you know, a, a more solid player you cannot find in our entire league. And this was one of the games where that was demonstrated so, so clearly, you know. Like, he just, he's always got a CS lead, no matter if he's up against a counter pick, no matter if he's up against, you know, Lamppost, another challenger player, by the way, on his signature one-trick pick of, of the mm -hmm. Jacks. And, you know, just able to get a CS lead, able to get the uh, able to get the prior priority every single time. Uh, yeah, I definitely got to shout out Cozy Shroud as well. 
Johnny, do you do you agree with these assessments or are you? Uh... Yeah, man. Like the, the the crazy part about like nine six is that he's probably the best jungler in our league, and we don't talk about mm -hmm. him because yeah. like his, his solo laners are so insane on this team. Yep. And, By the way, uh, uh, nine six one got to challenger uh, right before this series. Yeah. I I just saw it oh. in the in the queue. Uh, this guy it, it, this guy was like grandmaster for for the whole season, and finally he edged into that challenger with his brother. So uh, shout out to him and solo queue as well. Yeah, his Sorry, only problem is his, yeah his only problem. Problem is that he has the worst summoner name in the league. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. To be fair, that is a big issue. Like it is not even close. Yeah. Like it is, yeah. it is, it is substantially it is. worse. Yeah. He, he will never go pro with that name. Exactly. Never go pro. Yeah. 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 Right now. Put it on that. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Well, let, let's talk about let, let let's take a look at Kimchi Boys as a whole because uh, Wes uh, Wes and Johnny, you guys said it like. There just wasn't an answer for them this whole season, right? Um, and I think that we saw them, you know, they, they weren't trolling this week. They weren't uh, disrespecting this week. They showed us what they could really do. And their rotations were incredible. It was it was next level macro. Like I was sitting here just like with my mouth gaping open because I just didn't even understand. I didn't even know what I was watching. Like, how is he already <laughs> there? How is he, how is he rotated? Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't, I had his really what like that mm -hmm. just isn't really um there is no competition for it um so the the crazy part of what they do and it's a little bit of like obviously comparing the cloud nine is is a bit of an overstep but they're the cloud nine of our league and the mm -hmm. reason for that is like yeah you you saw in game one XYZ can do rotation stuff. Kimchi boys just do it slightly faster than them. You saw a team fights where I actually felt XYZ took a better fight, but Kimchi boys out executed them within their team fights. I honestly think one of the most interesting things would be to hear their comms during team fights because I want to know what they're saying because mm -hmm. they end up pulling out fights that you just don't think are possible. And that's not just because they're good solo queue players. Obviously, it helps. They can press the buttons real freaking good. But to be as organized as they are within those team fights that are the most chaotic parts of this game is by and far the most impressive part for me. Yeah, I absolutely have to agree with Johnny there. We even saw in the last fight, I was so impressed. Yumbi had the option of taking his Rise portal um, deep, um, deeper into oh, where the I rest of that. his team was. Yeah, but he decided not to and decided just to walk, ar walk around the back to the turret. And he, he ended up being in such a good position where Cozy literally just uh, like yeeted the Ezreal directly <laughs> into yeah. Yeah. the Yumbi at like 2 HP. But... To have the foresight to literally look at the team fight, where it's going, and think, okay, in five seconds, I need to be behind them. He that is some mm. like, you know, he, he's a medium pretty much. He can see the future, and it was <laughs> it was incredible. And it's yeah. every single player on Kimchi Boys every fight. That's like yeah, and yeah, with that same play, it's like you know he's he's looking at Snarfles who's coming towards the turret. And, and he puts the ultimate in a place where Snarfles is like, okay, I have to hesitate here because if I go forward, Yunbi is there. That's why, you know, but Yunbi's threatening his position right in front of the turret and behind the turret. And so the entire team fight gets completely altered by that play because he, because Yunbi is zoning like the entire area around like of, of turret aggro. So like, yeah, it's just, this, this guy is so insane. Right. Like we're, you know, we are in a game where we're talking about players like lamppost and kept who like in any other regional league would be the best. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, so like, like these guys are no slouches. They're really, really good uh, players, but Yunbi and cozy shroud just, you know, take it to the next level. Yeah. And we're talking about communication as well, looking at X, Y, Z, obviously, like you said, like, like a really strong team. Um, but like a prime example of, of maybe not communicating quite as clearly was that uh, fight in mid lane. It was close to kind of the end of the game there uh, where Vlad kept was in there. He flashed mm, in out, the and then out of players, nowhere. Yeah. Lamppost flashes yeah. in, kept yeah. out. Uh, it was like the timing was like, doof, doof. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like one after another, and like like I would love to be in in the comms too, and hear like what what happened there, right? Like, mm -hmm. and 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 I wonder, you know, as we move into season two, uh, which is starting uh, on August third, by the way, I'll go into more details uh, of that later. But um, can a team like X Y Z, if they can keep their roster, work on those communications to get to the same level to to at least take games away from this team? <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, we talked about this on stream and uh, we didn't get to finish it off because uh, plays kept happening. But Yun B, uh, we talked, he's talked about this before. I, I, you know, we have an issue and he's not very unlucky now because, you know, going to a place like LA or something is not the most viable option right now. But Yun B has aspirations uh, to go, you know, to go and take a look at those, those leagues and to keep getting better, see where his league skill can take him. And so I definitely think we should, we could see a, a shakeup. Uh, in general, I know some of these teams with our season, uh, some of these teams got put together a little bit last minute. I think we have a big shuffle incoming for season two, and we'll have to see as the registrations come in. But uh, the landscape could look totally different. We'll have some of the same star players, but how those players are are built around each other could be very, very different. Um, we're going to have some content, uh, you know, in the in the off season where we'll sort of break that down as news comes in, I think, and we'll mm. see if we can, uh, we'll have discussions um, about the entire thing. But yeah, I, I I see where you're coming from. Who can beat Kimchi Boys? But this Kimchi Boys, uh, this may have been, you know, the end of this version of Kimchi Boys. They may uh, they may be going their separate ways after this. Yep, I can't confirm any anything. Yeah, but we don't. Know that's a sure. possibility. <laughs> well, and the other thing is like we were talking about the strength of XYZ and how they yeah they be dominant in any other regional league. Like I, I a baseline which has been before like this league has basically been like the preeminent tournament for Winnipeg slash Manitoba League of Legends. Um, guys like kept guys like captain mm. starfleet those are the guys that dominated those land tournaments and yep. they would come on land and they would just be the best and trust me i've been slapped by captain and co <laughs> a ton of times <laughs> trying to play against them and it's like to see that this league is actually a level above that play xyz is real good again they had to go through some superstar teams on the road to making this final yeah. and it's like a bit unfortunate we didn't get to watch that basically on our main stream because yeah. if you just base it on them getting 3 0 in the finals here you're like oh they're not very good no they're really freaking good they're the mm. second best team in this league without a any doubt yeah and absolutely. just kimchi boys are just are just that next level that's all mm -hmm. yeah and I want to say, like, even even though it was a 3-0, and I think you guys mentioned on stream, it didn't feel like a 3-0. Like, yeah. there was, like, game two for sure yeah, they could have taken. Yeah, that game two especially, yeah. Yeah, they, not even they could have taken. They arguably should have taken. And there, there's, a, there's a saying in, like, a lot of fighting game communities where if you can take a game, you can take the set. So mm -hmm. yeah. it was sure. definitely possible for the side of XYZ, you know, to win that. And even on top of that, a lot of the other teams seemed like they weren't necessarily on the level of kimchi boys and xyz but it definitely seemed like had they put in you know some more work had they been able to like kind of smooth out some of the rough edges they could have also been on the same caliber as kimchi boys and as xyz you know mm -hmm. it was for sure so to answer darren's original question of who can compete with kimchi boys i think just about anyone we've seen these players improve a lot and now it's you know just just the just a much smaller amount than they've already improved more to get to the levels of kimchi boys. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, kimchi boys are amazing, but they're not some unkillable gods. Like you saw <laughs> solo kills on all their players. You saw, you know, there, you saw nine, six occasionally get out jungled, probably the least of all, you know, the only, the only jungler who could really face up against, uh, against him generally was captain snarfles. And maybe that guy from, um, uh, Oh, is it, is it, uh, oh, major danger. Yeah. yeah. So like, you know, we had some really good junglers, but Kimchi boys were, you know, you could approach them in almost any position and kind of focus on it. And so, yeah, as we go into season two, we get teams maybe becoming a little more comfortable with each other, a little more warning about the season, a little more preparation. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that that team play can start to, you know, uh, edge out the individual skill. Okay. So I want to do something, uh, that I think will be a little bit fun. Uh, gr grab your, your team rosters uh, here. I'm wondering if we put together, just for fun, this is like totally off the cuff, totally mm -hmm. for fun. If Kimchi Boys does say the same. Yep. What is, is your guys' dream team XYZ? Or if you could pick any players from all the other teams and put them together on some like uh, team that was built just to take down the big, yeah. bad Kimchi Boys. Uh, what would what would your team be? Just like off 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 top of your head. X Y Z with League of Dogs bot lane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> great. Yeah, that's uh, Gabby's Gabby's, Gabby's, in Gabby's thresh, thresh main. Like yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. I think X Y Z bot lane is really good. Don't get yeah. me wrong, but Gabby's is like you know he's this guy's been like 
top hundred challenger. Like you know, it's Wait, and Dresh made is nuts. Don't you mean Kimchi Boys with that with that bot lane? No, we're talking about besides Kimchi. Oh, boys. besides yeah, anyone on Kimchi Boys. Oh, okay, I see, yeah, I see what yeah, you mean. I see yeah. what you mean. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't actually have a very good argument against that. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I, Roy, Royal in chat says Dinsey top, and I definitely forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Post- <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not that's fair. That's what though. I was gonna say. Like, like <laughs> goes without saying, right? <laughs> like, yeah, Lamp Post is arguably this like second best, maybe the best top lane in our league. But is he Dinsey? And the question of whether he is or is not Dinzi, the answer is is he's not. So yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I, what do you want from that? I told so, him he's our Huni of this league, right? So I, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. what do you want? Is he Huni? No. Is he Dinzi? No. Yeah. Like Dinzi's the kind of player where they could add him to TFT and you'd build a comp around Dinzi because Dinzi's just the greatest, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. As long as Riot introduces that thing, which I'm making up right now, where you deny a ban so that Dinzi always gets Darius. <laughs> yes, exactly. Hey, man, we should look. We should look into it for season two, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm into it. We should put. I'm we should it. make like a section of our website called like uh, esportsassociation.com slash is this player Dinzi, yeah. and then you type in their OPGG, and then it, it'll tell <laughs> you if no. you have entered Dinzi's account or not. Yeah, that's all it is. I love it. I'm all down personally. <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh this is this like it's been it's been a really great this is a great series and it has been a really great season we've started to get to know these players on an individual basis you know their strengths their weaknesses um also you know having some of the players on the analyst desks joining us uh, as well and i think it's only going to get better in mm-hmm. season two um i mean for those wondering, sorry, we're, we're not doing an, an interview today, unfortunately, but uh, like huge props to Kimchi boys. They deserved it uh, for sure. And we're all looking forward to uh, season two and seeing how that all plays out. About season two, I'm going to go over this right now. Registration mm-hmm. will be open for June 26. Uh, keep look out on our social media and website for all the updates for that. If you've been watching this, and you're like, damn, I want to be a part of this league because it's the best league of all of the leagues. Like, who needs LCS? We don't need it. All we have is all we need is this. Um, put a team together, submit. We're doing uh, amateur and premier. Uh, amateur is plat and below, and premier is technically, I believe anywhere but obviously you know if you're silver for maybe well let's just say where maybe, is you, say, you don't think i can compete me, so. in pre- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's not that i think you can't it's that we think you shouldn't like <laughs> <laughs> we don't think you'll enjoy yourself yeah. <laughs> um i'll stick to casting it's okay yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so season two will start august 3rd Registration is open on June 26. I want to go over some of the other uh, leagues that we're uh, that we're covering here at Manitoba Esports Association as well. CS:GO had a great season as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we had sorry, the finals just... yesterday with a with Kulas Nation and Sunny Mouse Pads, which was a nail biter. Kulas Nation taking it with like some crazy star player performances. So you got to check out CS:GO. Uh, any CS:GO fans and uh, Darren, I know you got the info on Valorant as well. Yes, we are having a Valorant League next season. Very exciting stuff. If you picked up Valorant recently and you love it, put a team together, register, and be part of the inaugural Mm -hmm. Valorant League for Manitoba Esports Association. I think that's going to be so exciting. Wes, do you have more information on that? Uh, on the Valorant League, not not exactly. No, I, I don't okay. know about uh, dates. You can go on our website and check that out for yourself. We've got all the links down below. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, the Valorant season, you know, we're going to have some of the same casters. I know Johnny and I are are chomping at the bit to cast yeah. some Valorant as well as uh, Baby Whopper. Definitely going to be in there as well. You saw her earlier on the amateur stream and, and uh, last week as well. So yeah, Valorant's going to be amazing. August 3rd, Mel says in the chat, Mel has spoken. And uh, so yeah, that that is when that season's going to start. Registration will open at about the same time. So yeah, you know, CSGO fans, Valorant fans, League of Legends fans, uh, get in there. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to be gutted. 
<laughs> now, uh, uh, Wes, we're talking about registration, and, and sorry, I, I don't know the rules uh, quite as well as you do. Mm-hmm. What What is the rule right now for how many players on your team need to be from Manitoba and how many can be uh, without? So Manitoba? we're going to be That's releasing awesome. kind of a, a very, very detailed rule book in the next little while. Everybody can look at it. You'll be able to look at it on the on the rules. We will require some citizenship but uh, and some Manitoba uh, players on the team but uh just go take a look at that i I won't i won't rattle anything off the top of my head right now because uh i I don't want to get in trouble and i don't know it off by heart um but we've we spent a lot of time we're also going to be very very transparent with the players about exactly how that's going to function and we're going to have a meeting right before uh we're going to have a meeting with with player representatives before the season starts about exactly how everything's going to work. So, uh, yeah, you know, just, just, uh, keep, uh, keep abreast of all that, all those updates and we'll, we'll continue to bring you as much esports as we can, uh, in the best way that we can. Absolutely. Sorry to put you on the spot there, Wes. That's okay. Uh, I was no, yeah. Curious <laughs> myself. I, I wasn't able to uh, get that question out to, uh, mm-hmm. the producers in time. Um, no, that's okay. Yeah. The, but, people can uh, check it out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have news on that again on the social media and the website. Uh, keep watching it. Um, we have a Red Bull giveaway in the chat. Uh, DM uh, Mel. I mean, you're watching the chat right now. Uh, DM Mel if you want to be get involved as a caster or be a part of, of the staff. We'd love to have you. Uh, we have a great time. Uh, as Hopefully, it's coming across to you guys. Um, Man, it's been a great season. So, I don't know did, what else to say. Did you say you have we have the Red Bull giveaway? Uh, yes, we do. Did you already announce it or? Uh, um, we haven't. I have not been told who okay. the winner so, of the Red Bull giveaway well, is. Well, yeah, maybe uh, just stick around in the chat if we go offline. Uh, I I bought uh, today. I I went and got a Red Bull uh, blue. I could have gotten one from Mel if I had uh, if I had. Um, thought in time to, to, <laughs> to you know because she's got just racks and racks at her house apparently. Uh, not that you know. She, she'll be she'll distribute them as she sees don't fit don't worry about right that now, so don't dox Mel, please <laughs> just, just and, and anyway uh stick around and chat for that and uh you know keep uh keep keep paying attention to all of our social media and to our stream because we're going to do some really fun off-season content we've got planned it'll be a lot of fun um mel confirming she has racks at her house of red bull uh mm-hmm. yeah we're gonna have a lot of fun in the off season gonna do some content we're gonna do sort of if you ever watch you know things like uh the dive or any of those you know the or you euphoria any of those things we're gonna do something along those lines with our league but better but, but better, better. That's, <laughs> exactly. that's guaranteed 100 definitely, definitely gonna have you know all your favorites on stream and potentially even off stream personalities uh joining us there so That'll be fun. Make sure you're following us everywhere. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I think, I don't think there's anything much left to say except continue to follow us, and we'll continue to update you on what's happening with the league. Yeah, let's say one more time. Keep following us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've said about seven. We've said about seventeen times, but one more time. Keep just, just follow us. Just follow do us. it. Just follow do us. it. Follow you us. won't regret it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so so much for this for tuning in for the finals. Thank you so much for tuning in for the whole season. Those of you who've been supporting us here at the Manitoba Esports League, we appreciate you so so much. Um, Keep tuning in, mm-hmm. and we will see you for uh, again some of that off-season content that we were talking about. Uh, I want to we'll give a quick you. shout out before we before we yeah. close off. We've got amazing people behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I want to shout out Kieran, who yeah. has been you know amazing on the stream. This guy doesn't just push the buttons really well for the stream. He he invented the system of pushing buttons for our stream. Like <laughs> yeah. he is an innovator, and so we this this production value would not happen without him. I want I want to shout out Renato as well, doing a lot of behind the scenes administration, and he has kept this league. You know, he's kept his finger on the pulse of what ha- what's happening between teams, everything like that. Thank you so much, Renato. I want to shout out Alex, uh, who is you know he is our rock. He is always there when we need a solution. He's always there to you know to oversee. He does. He's done pretty much every single job possible in this league. Thank you so much, Alex. Finally, you know, I want to shout out uh, you know Melanie. Uh, the team, the league's named after you for a reason. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's been amazing to work with all of you. If I, I, I'm sure, you know, I've missed a couple people. Shout out to Kang, uh, shout out to all the players who joined us. Tate Thalas, you know, Captain Snarfles, Tiger Clown, 
uh, Dinsbeg, Ro- Rodov, all these different players, Wheelie. Uh, there's too many, but, you know, we have had amazing engagement at this league so far, and it's just been so, so, you know, it, it's been so great. Everybody in the chat who, you know, uh, keeps it going with the memes and the flame. I love you all. Uh, and yeah, just, just a big thank you to everybody here, Darren, Stefano, Johnny, um, Andy West. Y- you've all been amazing. So yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, w- I don't want to thank Wes. You're, you're a garbage yeah. person. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you want to inflate your ego anymore. So we're, we're yeah, not going to thank you. True. Everyone but Wes. I will <laughs> thank, uh, <laughs> thank everyone but me. I'll take, I'll take it back. I take it back. I don't want to thank Johnny anymore. You know what I'm just <laughs> oh, <man>. well. <laughs> No, screw you, Johnny. (laughs) Well, it looks like we have some drama of our own for season two on the caster desk. The grudge match continues. Let's go. There's off-season content. (laughs) Oh, man. Well, yeah, just a lot of thank yous going around. Thank you so much, you guys. We will see you so soon. I am Darren Iroba Martins. Thank you, Stefano, Johnny, and Wes for joining me, as well as Tay Thales, who unfortunately uh, had to go because internet I- uh, issues. But thank you for tonight. Mm-hmm. A big congratulations again to Kimchi Boys for taking the whole season uh, mm-hmm. into their hands and winning it uh, this season. And we hopefully will see these teams back and your team on August 3rd. Thanks again, you guys. Stay safe. Stay salty. Good night.